Welcome back to Northern Land Plays, The Binding of Northern Land. We're going to random, we're going to get Samson. I was really hoping to finish that sentence by saying we're going to get Northern Lion. We're going to get Isaac. We're going to have a good run. But now we've got uh, our work cut out for us to a slightly larger degree than normal. I almost lost that spirit heart, which is essentially uh, my lifeblood right now. But anyway, let's talk about, let's set the stage. For how Spelunky, or not Spelunky, how the Binding of Isaac has been going recently. So apologies, this is what happens when you got like 69 series on the go at the same time. You get him confused. Am I playing Hearthstone? This doesn't look like Hearthstone. I'll play the Gurubashi Berserker, please. With a side of fries and a Diet Coke. What do we have in our red chest here? Oh, good. Finally. Um, the game continues to give us the worst items of all time as consumables. But anyway, uh, we've been playing really well in Isaac lately. I can't uh, tell a lie. It has gone exceptionally well, and uh, most of the recent videos, if not like all of the past week's Isaac videos, have ended in a successful blue baby kill. Now, to be fair, some of those videos did start with a death within the first like 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, but by the end, they, you know, the kinks had worked themselves out, and I had ended up uh, coming through in the clutch. So I should, I, I have at least a 50% win rate in every video, and at least a win in every video is pretty surprising uh, relative to the norm, shall we say. So, you know, a lot of those games have been pretty easy. We've done it in some different ways, though. We've had some Mom's Knife runs. We've had a couple of Brimstone runs in there. Uh, but we've also had a lot of technology, a lot of Polyphemus showing up without Mom's Knife, which is obviously still incredibly valuable, but still. Um, a lot of Guppy's Paw scamming and just getting some good stuff done. We, we've beaten Blue Baby with, like, 12 different... Uh, space bar items at the end of the game, which is not the norm. Uh, one of them even was Mom's Bra, which ended up being perhaps the most fun of all of them. But anyway, we're gonna try to continue that here. I can't make any promises. Obviously, uh, you know, as Samson, we've got our work cut out for us. We start with some okay infrastructure in the sense that uh, Rage is alright. We start with terrible health, which means deals with the devil are gonna be hard to uh, swing. And we also, you know, lack, I think our rate of fire is a little bit lower. Oh, good, we did get, I'm firing my laser right off the bat, though. We'll be able to use this to uh, accomplish approximately jack shit. We'll check out our item room. Hopefully there's a better space bar item in there. Well, it's a speed upgrade. Honestly, uh, as far as item rooms go, this one's probably in the upper one-third of items. Not because it's particularly great, but because, you know, it is a passive item. It is an attribute that I need. It's not necessarily going to win the game for me, but it might stop me from taking some damage at some point. Of course, I will try to make the best use possible of, uh, I'm firing my laser. It's not the worst item in the game. Uh, it is certainly not an item that I want to be carrying with me into the late game, though. It's almost like it's an active version of Brimstone. I should really put my cell phone on silent. Um, it's like an active version of uh, Brimstone that unfortunately doesn't work as quickly, so it's harder, harder to hit people with, which is bad. Okay, I'm gonna take this bomb for a second. Talk amongst yourselves while I hold down the volume slider here. The problem is, occasionally my phone decides, you know, I, I want to ring. I, I want my phone to ring when somebody calls me. That's usually important. It's, maybe it's the energy department. They're like, hey, pay your bill or we're going to shut off your electricity. That's important information to know. Maybe my mom's calling. She's saying I love you. and You you might be laughing. That's important information to know, too. It's it's You're nobody if somebody loves you. That's what Tony Bennett said, and uh, I want to be somebody. But then it's like, okay, so you want me to ring whenever somebody calls you to, to tell you something important. And I'm like, yeah, phone, that's the idea of having a phone, isn't it? It's like, okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'll do that, and I'll ring or beep when somebody tweets you or sends you an email. And I'm like, don't do that. That's horrible. Why would you ever think that? But uh, here I am. Now, I'm trying to, basically what I'm getting at is I'm a 70-year-old man who does not understand how to use technology and that there's probably settings I can use to... Uh, Make it so that only preferred applications actually beep. Who knows, man. I'm kind of amazed that in spite of all of this ranting, I have not managed to... I am going to use pin here, by the way. Or, sorry, shoot the whoop. Oh, see? That was such bullshit. The first time I took damage was trying to use shoot the whoop to kill the easiest enemy in the game. Probably should have set up a little bit more of a perimeter around him before that. But anyway. Um, yeah, I, what I was about to say is that I, I hadn't taken damage on this run yet, despite the fact that I've been paying, like... 2% attention to the game in general, and just kind of going off on my own way and calling it another lonely day, Lindsey Buckingham style. Uh, now, if we just hold the button here, Pin is like the easiest boss we could possibly fight by this point in the game. He hurts himself. That's he, He's just evening the playing field. And of course we get Pageant Boy. It's going to be one of those runs, is it? First item room is going to give me Pageant Boy. Then on this one, we, yeah, we'll get Q of Meat, and then there will be a two-heart 
deal with the devil to pick up mom's knife or something like that that I can't quite justify taking but probably will and then uh, you know I'll get shit on in the comments why did you take that mom's knife deal you didn't have enough HP the game is forcing me into a situation here it's like telling a, a person that's impoverished just to stop being so poor just start making more money the game's forcing me it's making me it's marginalizing me Pushing me to the outside edges of what is actually possible with my skills in Spelunky. In ah, god damn it! You know what it is? Is because I was just thinking before I started this. I was like, uh, someone informed me that there is a Spelunky mod where you can now use my face uh, instead of the Spelunker man's face. And I've been thinking, you know what? I should totally do that because that would be hilarious, and hopefully, it would also give me. Uh, some aversion to death because in a weird subconscious way it'll be like I'm actually killing myself instead of just an avatar on the screen. I don't know. But that is why I've got it confused in my head right now. That and I haven't had any coffee yet today. So, you know, what did I tell you? I took the mark, which was the worst idea of all time. I would like to point out uh, in my own defense here, the reason I took the mark was because I've gotten a number of comments recently when I haven't taken the mark of people telling me that it gives you two spirit hearts. Is that true? Well, I guess it fucking might be. But, uh, the reason I would s I can't say definitively, let's just use this pill, that's fine. Um, the reason I can't say definitively yet is because, uh, that was a weird case where we didn't have enough hearts to actually buy the item outright. Please be HP upgrades. Oh god, tears downgrades? I just got a tears upgrade, you scum! Well, um, this is gonna be a tall order, but suffice it to say, I- YOU DID THIS TO ME, COMMENTERS, AND ME, and myself also have played a small role, I guess, cause I'm the one actually driving the bus in this situation, but seriously, I guess I, I did not think uh, that the mark actually did that, and it seems to be like that is the actual case of the situation here. So, this floor is pretty much an example of me uh, probably killing myself. That being said, we just need to get one more key, go to an item room, pick up some HP upgrades, and we're good to go. I have one on several runs recently where I, it looked like I was going to die for a certain period of time. I'm hoping that this is not going to be one of them. In a weird way, if it's going to happen, I would rather ha it happen sooner uh, as opposed to later, just so I actually do have a chance to... Um, actually, let's check and see if this is our secret room. Just so I do have a chance to fit in another run before we hit like an hour of runtime, which would be crazy. Um, okay, so that was obviously something I don't really want to deal with. It was uh, an item room and a shop that are not connected by a secret room, so two keys would be amazing. Let's try this again. That worked a little bit better. We got one penny from the champion, so thank you, based god, for that single penny. We actually did get a key out of it as well. I'm just a shithead who's unappreciative, I guess. Let's put our bomb down here, and hopefully we'll pick up a uh, secret room. All right. And another six cents. Now, here's the question. Do we go to the shop or the item room in this case? Well, we know that it can't be greed in the shop because it's the first series of floors. So, I think we should go to the shop, and maybe there will be a key for sale, even if there's not a good item. But if there is a good item, then I can pick it up. Well, uh, there is a Book of Revelations. There is no key. And I am going to buy a Book of Revelations here because, simply put, I've basically put myself into a situation where I have to buy a Book of Revelations or I'm going to die. So, this is going to be an unusual victory if it shakes out into a victory, which is looking relatively unlikely. We are going to leave behind one item room. We picked up Cube of Meat, Speed Upgrade, Pageant Boy, and the Book of Revelations. Let me take a sip of my coffee. Please hand me some energy here. Mmm. It's a little bit too hot and I forgot that I just brushed my teeth, so it's got a weird taste to it. This has been Northern Lions Live Coffee Blog. Um, if you want to follow me for more, you can go facebook.com slash Northern Lions Coffee. Uh, or, you know, youporn.com slash Asa Akira. Um, we're just gonna hold down some buttons here and enemies will die and then we'll win or lose and that's how it's gonna go. Oh, okay, that was kind of close. Uh, I guess I should deal with the neutral poop fly here. Favorite, I really love, um... In the Aeroplane Over the Sea by Neutral Poop Fly. I think it's one of those underappreciated albums. Such a, a great story as well with uh, Jeff Mangum, you know, and the whole Anne Frank thing and then disappearing. That's uh, not going to make sense to that many people, more people than I'm probably aware of, but it hopefully will be amusing for them. Nonetheless, we'll pick up our key and our treasure chest here. All right, red hearts that we can't use, but maybe we'll snag an HP upgrade and be able to do something with those, because for now, uh, I am rolling on blues. Which sounds like it could be like Usher's next hit signal. Signal? Alright, that's an error that I can't uh, allow. So we're gonna destroy these greed flies here. The one saving grace here is uh, tears upgrade plus tears downgrade. That neutralizes itself. But we do have a, an increased rate of fire and damage as a result of picking up the mark. So that uh, allows us to kill enemies a little bit faster and it allows us to build rage faster as well. Uh, which is possibly even more important than. Uh, 
the, the base damage in and of itself, although probably not, because a lot of bosses, base damage matters a lot more than being able to build rage, because they don't actually spawn enemies. So, uh, in this situation, you know, we're in the same situation we were in on the last floor, we've got one key. What do I do with that key? Uh, I would love to go to the item rooms, don't get me wrong. But if we get one more penny, I kind of feel like I have to go to the shop because we've invested so heavily in this Book of Revelation strategy out of necessity, basically, uh, that I need to possibly give myself chances for Nun's Habit, chances for Battery, chances for 9-Volt, etc., etc. Uh, and of course, I don't know, if we came across the Blue Candle or something, I guess I wouldn't be able to take it. There's a Spirit Heart for me. But hopefully we won't have to make that difficult decision and we'll just get a, uh, a key drop at some point on this run, although... You know, I don't hold out a lot of hope for that happening because I'm aware of what game we're playing and I'm aware of the way that the Binding of Isaac can kind of snowball in a negative way sometimes. If things are going bad, they tend to get worse. So, we will not be fighting a... Uh, oh, actually, you know, we totally will be fighting a Horseman of the Apocalypse on this floor. I forgot that we were on Catacombs Part 1 as opposed to uh, Cellular Basement 2 because we did have an XL floor last time. So, we should be picking up a second level cube of meat. It's not the most uh, game changing item we could possibly imagine, but it may allow us. To, oh, that's a good secret room. Could give us enough money to go to the shop for sure, which would be nice. Uh, it does indeed. Another key would be amazing now. <clears throat> but yeah, you know, a second level cube of meat, it's something. It helps us out a little bit. And then uh, if we can get some orbitals to replace it, I would love to get a third level cube of meat. And we could use that third level third level cube of meat to uh, solve world hunger or something. So we have teleport instead of book of revelations. I think it's a bad item. Uh, I'm just going to come out and say it, but I will pick it up. I know teleport has the potential to give you the I am error room, but uh, that's not really that worthwhile in my opinion, uh, especially when it would cost us an item if I used it straight away. We'll definitely buy the map. I think additionally it would be smart to buy the uh, key there, and I will open this golden chest actually. Tarot card is the hanged man. So uh, that could have gone better, there's no question about that. There was a penny back here that I could pick up if I used the hanged man, but that's uh, not a very good trade in my opinion. Basically three cents for one cents if you follow the uh, chain all the way down. Okay, oh, okay, now it's not cool. We gotta stop taking so much damage. Maybe I should have bought the Spirit Heart instead of the key. Well, knowing now when I, or knowing then when I know now, I definitely would have picked up the Spirit Heart instead of the key. But we're still alive, and we actually, relatively well, uh, I have gained more health than I lost on this floor, which is uh, always a fairly good metric of success. There is a half red heart that I can't use. Okay, so yes, it will indeed be Pestilence. Pestilence should be an easy boss fight. We'll be able to build some rage off of him. Uh, the only thing is we don't really have any real crowd control except for doing more damage via rage so I'm hoping that uh, he doesn't spawn too many enemies weirdly enough and counterintuitively enough okay that was some of the hardest pestilence dodging I've had to do in a long long time he basically created a situation where there was only one avenue that we could use to get out and it actually was electric avenue uh, and it wanted to take you higher wait is that Creed or is that electric avenue I wanna rock down to electric avenue yes yeah, and then I'll take you higher to the place where blind men see. It is, it's both. It's the Electric Avenue Creed mashup. Jars of Human Clay. Wait, is that... That's Alice in Chains, I think. Okay. Uh, so there's our cube of meat. Beautifully and ironically, we have another uh, deal with the devil here. It's actually a good thing because we are going to be able to pick up uh, a lump of coal, which is a pretty solid get for us, I guess. It's the best thing that this deal with the devil room could have held for us, considering that we don't have any HP to pick up anything else, so uh, I'll take a raw damage increase, basically. Well, it's not really raw, I guess. He's got a scale. Hey, here's another... I told you that great knock-knock joke in a video recently. Let me uh, teach you another joke here. It's a little bit dated now, but this is back when I was in, like, third year of university or fourth year of university. This is big, so you say, uh, how does Lady Gaga like her steak? Ra 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 ra. That's pretty good, right? It's from that one song that she sang. It's clever. Pop culture reference, you know. Next thing you know, you'll be on. You'll have your own show on the E Entertainment Network. So we picked up another key, which is beautiful, and a lump of coal, which could be beneficial. Damage is slightly better now. Um, everything else has gone to shit, but let's take a sip of this coffee. And I guess I will go to every room that we have available here. I should be. Doing pretty well from a, a, a damage standpoint relative to, you know, the enemies that I'm coming across. Which is, you know, generally my philosophy when I'm outclassing enemies on a damage standpoint is go as many rooms as possible because uh, it just gives us more opportunities to charge up our D6. Sorry, our Book of Revelations. Uh, same number of charges, I guess, required, but it uh, doesn't necessarily fill the same role. Uh, please, Meat Boy, help me out here. Uh, we're probably going to have to take some damage. Oh, I hit one! All we gotta do is open up a seam here, and uh, 
Why am I shooting? Oh no, never mind. That was I thought I had Ghost Baby the way these sh or Harlequin Baby the way these shots were coming out, but it was actually just me and Meat Boy shooting at like a weird regular interval that made it look like uh, Harlequin Baby was involved. So I have a feeling there might be greed in that shop, and honestly, that's not the worst case scenario. That's terrible. Get out of here. Um, obviously, the best case scenario for us would be to get to 15 cents and then uh, be able to buy an awesome item from the shop. But uh, the second best case scenario is if we don't get to 15 cents, we go fight Greed. Greed gives us the steam sale or enough money to go to the next shop uh, on our own. Please kill him before he gets closer. Excellent. Uh, cool. We'll continue onwards here. We definitely have enough uh, uh, keys to justify going to the item room in this situation, unless it's a shitty item, and then there's no justification, but we're going to do it anyway. And we'll talk about how we're going to spend this uh, Hanged Man card eventually. Used to be one of my favorite cards in the game, but now it's actually one of my least favorite cards in the game. Just because it doesn't really offer all that much. A lot of cards have like single uses that actually convey a lot of benefits to them. Even something like uh, the card that gives you the slot machine, Wheel of Fortune. If you manage to take that into the chest, that gives you a whole item, which is fucking crazy. That's a really good card. You have to save it, which is frustrating, but, uh, you know, Hanged Man doesn't always have a situation like that. It kind of is dependent on what you come across. So, uh, we picked up a nickel here, which is nice. We picked up a fool card, which is meaningless. We have a pill, and the pill is... Bad Gas. And I don't even want to pick up Isaac's Fork. I mean, I, I kind of do. There's no reason not to, except Spite. But Spite is a very powerful motivator sometimes. Uh, I'm going to go to the shop. I have enough money to potentially buy something on sale. Had a feeling we'd be fighting Greed, of course. Uh, and that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll knock him out. And then we should be able to uh, get a real item room on the next floor. Actually, you know, I guess the ideal circumstance on this floor would have been Greed in the secret room. He drops a bunch of money. Then you can go to the uh, shop and buy... Nun's habit maybe would be the best uh, of all the possible items for us. But hey, there's some more money. And uh, we did get another fight in, so we are about one room away from having our Book of Revelations charge up again. Oh, I hate this room! <laughs> the intersections of flies are so fucking frustrating. I can't use the Keanu Reeves powers to see into the future and dodge these bullets. I guess Keanu Reeves didn't have to dodge bullets. Oh, man. So I lost that spirit heart already trying to pick up like two cents. Uh, I didn't just throw, by the way, to take damage there. It looked like I might have, but it's because I had a very, very brief period of invincibility. And I was like, fuck, if I'm going to lose a spirit heart, I might as well get at least two cents for the trouble instead of uh, just the one. So, we're going to get through here without taking damage, presumably. We are up to 16 cents now. All valuable pennies. And uh, telepathy for dummies. So the game has apparently been watching many of my recent videos, and it's saying, you know, Northern Line... Hubris is getting a little out of control, so we're going to give you all of these spacebar items that you don't even really want. I mean, even Book of Revelations, I didn't really want. I, might, I would have been content to stick with the... Eh, it's not worth anything here. I would have been content, in all honesty, to stick with Shoop to Whoop instead of Book of Revelations, except that I accidentally sold myself out. Uh, keep in mind, by the way, that that turns out to have not made a major difference. It's not like we've had more HP upgrades that have shown up since then uh, that would have really bolstered my health too much. It might even be better to put myself on low health, permanent Polaroid invincibility possibility uh, versus, you know, low health and no permanent Polaroid invincibility possibility. Hopefully that sentence made any sense at all. Hey, there, we got an HP upgrade, so we will be able to make some use of Guppy's Paw if it shows up. Uh, ten bombs. I will go through the fight here. And this was an example of a situation where uh, the hanged man would have been really great before that patch that came out like a year ago. We could have just walked into the room, picked up the ten bombs, and then teleported the f or flown the fuck out with hanged man, which would have been awesome. But I understand again why that balance change had to come in because he was basically giving people free items uh, without requiring them to put anything on the table in terms of risk. Not that Isaac is a, a game that's made to not be broken, because obviously that's part of the fun. But still, it was a little bit ridiculous. So we will have an HP upgrade. There's no reason not to pick up Goat Hoof, I suppose. That does give us a speed upgrade. And we haven't been to the item room yet. Or sorry, the secret room yet, despite my map coverage. So we might as well do that. I'm a little bit surprised that I'm still alive, to be honest with you. Uh, we got a modicum of money. I don't know what my awkward sentence was supposed to be there. I was going to say, like, a medium amount of monetary instruments. I don't know. I don't work for Border Patrol, so those words should never exit my mouth. Hanged Man and the Fool. The Fool's not going to do anything for us here, but Hanged Man, I hold out hope that it could do something better. Obviously, the Fool card could be beneficial. Oh, glory, so we only have one more shop left. It's very intimidating to have the map on this floor and realize, like, oh my god, this is, like, enormous. <laughs> 
This is a really, really big floor. And, uh, oh my god, I'm getting trapped in buttfuck alley population, soon to be my carcass here. Are you seeing this shit? One more hit and I will be killed. Oh my god, okay. Uh, I will absolutely use the hanged man card here to get this chest without wasting a key. So there we go. We effectively, the hanged man card got traded in for a key. That's a pretty solid trade in my opinion. It certainly could be a lot worse. And, uh, we got another key out of it as well, so... We got another two keys out of it, actually. So if we just manage to survive a very slight bit longer, we will probably be able to hold off our death for the near future, at least, by getting another Book of Revelations charge. So I don't even know, on XL floors, I don't think you're guaranteed to actually fight, uh, war, or, oh my god, are you serious? What happened to my last eternal heart? Did that just not work? I had a red, I was supposed to have a red heart as a result of this. I guess taking the mark leg like, short circuited the, the fucking Isaac hive mind. So now they didn't give me the proper benefit. I think they gave me a spirit heart instead of giving me a fucking uh, full HP upgrade. That is the that is a pile full of bull right there. I never understood the phrase bullshit. Like, I think people try to justify. It. They're like, oh, you know, cow shit is like particularly smelly. I don't disagree with that. But I think there's a certain artistry in the word bullshit that uh, a lot of people are not necessarily consciously aware of. It just rolls off the tongue well, right? Like, bullshit. It's got like a long, kind of guttural sound followed by a very short, kind of uh, right off the tip of your tongue sound. That's humor, in my opinion at least. And, you know, I'm not a funny guy, so they, they take this at face value or don't listen to me fucking at all. But in my opinion, humor's a lot about, you know, the juxtaposition of, of words that normally don't go together. For example, you just test it out for yourself. We got like, um, majestic butthole. There's no joke associated with the phrase majestic butthole, right? But just the fact that you say majestic butthole, the way that it kind of rolls off your tongue, it titillates you a little bit, doesn't it? Majestic butthole, you're like, well, first off, buttholes are not something that's normally described as majestic. Maybe the posterior of a particularly attractive specimen of the other sex, you might say that they have a majestic behind, or um, perhaps a, a breathtaking derriere, but uh, the butthole itself is the, the least glamorous part for many people. I'm not trying to push my own opinions on you, uh, of the, uh, the Calipesian region, if you will. Now, uh... You could probably make a joke about it, but it's all there's also some uh, some cadence in there, right? Majestic butthole. It's like majestic sets it up to be this elegant. Th oh no, I'm dead. Well, to be honest with you, that was kind of perfect timing because I could have probably gone off on that forever. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I apologize for this episode being terrible. I don't know what I did. I broke the game, but not in a good way for once. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more Daily Isaac. And if you enjoyed the talk about the majestic butthole, uh, feel free to leave a like on the video. It does help support the channel a lot, as well as civil comments telling me what I could or could not do better. There's a lot of things I could do better in that video. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you next time.